Week five of Dancing with the Stars got emotional where the stars dedicated their dances to their most memorable year. Hey everyone, this is Hippa Berry joined today by Hannah Fletcher. Week five of Dancing with the Stars aired and the theme was for the celebs to pick a memorable year they had in their lives as a source of inspiration for their dance this week. Some performed the contemporary dance, Quick Step, Viennese Waltz, and the Paso Doble. I think emotional was the best word to describe the night. Lots of vulnerability we saw in the packages as each celeb got deep and shared with us the highs and the lows they experienced in their lives thus far. The stars did not come to play and you can truly see the improvement in each and every one of them just at week five. Hannah, what were your reactions to this week's episode? Honestly, I think the way that you said it sums it up best. I think that this is a very emotional week for everybody. I, I expected the emotions to be high. I genuinely didn't expect everybody to be crying as much as I feel like they were. But I feel like there's an element of that too that's very cathartic. And you know, that's a very vulnerable thing being live on television and shedding some tears and like working through things. I mean, we saw with Ariana and Charity, you know, they had some big hardships that they were able to conquer via their dances. So I think that it was a really great night. I really enjoyed it. I think that this cast is super talented. They're all so beautiful. And I'm just really glad with, with who we have still standing. And I think that it's a really shaping up to be a very, very great season. Not that it wasn't, but I think that it's really progressing. Yes, a great season indeed. And now we're going to review the top four best dances. First up, we have Sochi Gomez. Last week, she got a score of 27 out of 30, which was the highest of the season. And for this week, she performed the contemporary dance to the song, Until I Found You. During the dance, she was wearing this beautiful blue gown with a tiara. And she had mentioned that her memorable year was when she missed her quinceanera. So she kind of wanted to recreate it here for this week's competition. So let's go ahead and take a look at her dance. Now again, that beautiful dress was sweeping through the dance floor and the judges were very impressed as well. Carrie Ann says she loved every moment, even though there was a teeny wobble and Derek acted like he didn't see a wobble and he said it was beautiful and that she looked like a Disney princess, which I definitely agree. And it was surprising because Bruno and Carrie Ann gave her nines and Derek gave her their first 10. She says that she did not expect that moment. It was a really cute moment when they were celebrating her and Val. Uh, Hannah, did you think she was deserving of that 10? Definitely. I think she's so cute and so talented. One thing is when I'm watching Sochi, I have to remind myself. I mean, I don't have to, but I choose to. I have to remind myself that this girl is young. I mean, she's in the upper teens. She's 17 years old. I mean, she is so young and she carries herself so well. She dances like an adult. She carries herself like a very mature adult. I think that she definitely deserved that 10. I don't know. I had initially in, at the beginning of this competition, I was thinking Jason Mraz was going to be the winner. And then now I'm kind of like maybe charity. But then also I feel like Sochi is like one that, you know, she is a she is a tough competitor. And I know that Val has some championship under his belt as well. So I know that these two are a force to be reckoned with. I think that they are so talented. And I think that especially at this point in the season, I've said this a couple of times now, but I feel like everybody's really starting to, to understand their partner too. So they're really able to choreograph to their partner's best abilities to get those high scores. So of course, I think she deserved a 10. I love the fact that she was paying homage to her quinceanera. And I think that it was just so sweet to be able to kind of bring everything together. What better way to make it up on the dance floor on Dancing with the Stars? And she even told us in the beginning that she's idolized Val for a very long amount of time while the show's been on the air. So I love it. Give her, give her and him all tens. <laughs> I love it so much. And I'm sure that it's coming. I agree. I see a 30 perfect score in her near future. She has been someone that has been improving drastically every week. And someone else that has been improving drastically every week is Charity Lawson. Last week, Derek says her dance was beautiful and graceful. She did get a 24 out of 30. She was disheartened that she didn't get a nine. And she ended up saying that her most memorable year, aka the inspiration for this week, was a toxic relationship she left due to infidelity. She said there was a lot of effort, but there was no return. 
She is dancing a contemporary dance to the song Lose You to Love Me by, of course, Selena Gomez. Let's go ahead and take a look at the performance. I mean, Hannah, I'll, I'll kick it off to you. I want to get your reaction on this dance. I love Charity. I love Artem. I think that this dance was very great, very strong. Carrie Ann eventually went on to say that this is going to be the dance that everybody's thinking about and talks about. This will be whenever, you know, if you and I were sitting and having coffee. Oh, you remember season 32? This is the <laughs> dance that you're immediately going to be thinking of. I really do agree with that. I think that there were a lot of really unique factors that went into this dance. I think the fact of, the fact of this, this monkey bar looking thing right here, this jungle gym, I would see this at the park. I love it. I, I don't know exactly <laughs> what to call it, but this is incredible. And also the fact that she's just like doing that in her bare feet is incredible to me too. Like, I don't know, my feet would be sweating. I don't know how she's able to like get such a good grip with all of the tension and the nerves, even with like being on live TV. She's fantastic for being able to do this now that's where 12 years of cheer comes in handy too let me just say yes but um i think that she did such a great job and i think that this was just a really great dance for her she was very connected to it again her partner i think understood where she was coming from and knew how to physicalize the emotions behind the conflict that she identified and overcame really well done really beautifully done and finally we're starting to see the matching of the scores and the dance everybody on social media especially so mad for the past two weeks. Now, I know that Charity and Artem were too, but you know the internet. <laughs> so the internet was very upset that the scores were not matching. I feel like this is much more of a match. We are we are getting a lot warmer here this week with the scores. What do you think, Kippa? Where do you stand with this one? I was very surprised at the incorporation of those monkey bars, little mini jungle gym set they had <laughs> on stage, I guess we could call it. She has amazing upper body strength. I mean, she was just flinging herself up and down with those arms and even doing a trust fall into mm -hmm. Artem's hands right off that whole little set of jungle gym monkey bar situation. So, I mean, again, that takes a lot of trust in your partner and just to have to be in sync with them, it really reflects in their performance. So I definitely see the trust and the bond these two have. And it was just so emotional for her. And you can even see at the end, when she is uh, listening to the judges' feedback, how emotional she is and how she's still recovering, just from pouring her heart and her soul all out on the dance floor as it should be, especially in the art of dance. And that just made it more believable and just more passionate. And you can just see it more in her movement. And of course, the judges also had a lot of opinions as well. Derek says they utilize her prop very well, so he agrees with us. And she danced with strength and bravery. Bruno says the visuals of the dance were super. Her charity was getting really emotional at this point, and especially when she was talking to Julianne. She said she left it all out on the dance floor, and Artem pushed her as well. Charity gets a 10 from Carrie Ann and nines from Derek and Bruno. This is the first 10 of the season, and Charity's reaction said it all. And Artem said he did not expect this. Once again, I was not surprised at this score. Her and Sochi are going to be neck to neck and they are, we saw on the leaderboard. So they're going to be each other's competition. So I think one of them is going to have to really step out of each other's shadow and really try to be the person that puts their foot ahead. And um, again, I think all of these scores are kind of matching what the judges have been saying. I really wasn't expecting the 10, but Carrie on loved this performance. So I think it was all very well deserving. I think that the scores were pretty good. I was surprised to hear the 10. Because I didn't know, I didn't know where it was going to go. I thought that that was going to be indefinitely accompanied by other tens. I think it's more or less the fact that maybe there were two nines given. Honestly, at this point, I'm just glad that the judges are waking up to the idea that the scores weren't matching the dances and that a lot of fans were very upset about that. So also we're, we're only on week five. Charity's not going anywhere. She's going to be here a because <laughs> yeah. she is charity and she's fantastic. And she has, beautiful dance ability so she's gonna be here for a long time because of that there is a certain element too i think where you know your fan base really obviously comes in and really supports you with the votes she's just coming off of the bachelorette it's very recent too i think that she's going to be here for a very long time and i think when that's at stake you know you can wait a little bit longer for the tens at that point as long as you're in that upper bracket of like that like eight nine ten region 
I feel like especially going into next week, I think that those are the people to really keep an eye on. And those are probably going to be the more safer ones for a longer period of time. But yeah, I don't know. I was shocked. I was shocked. Not in a bad way. Um, I just thought that it was going to be more tens accompany, accompanying the 10. Uh, that's what I was hoping for. But at this point and at where we've been, I'm glad to see that we are at this point. And I'm glad to see that they're out of the eights because she's she's better than yeah. an eight. She is. So I'm glad. I'm very glad. Yes, they're in the territory of getting tens, hopefully more on out, especially as they continue in the competition. And again, she's also mm-hmm. someone that I'm sure she's going to get tens in her near future. Because again, she has been improving so much, so steadily and quickly. So can't wait to see how much more she'll progress in the upcoming weeks. All right, up next, we have Jason Mraz. Last week, Derek said he needs to use more legs for stability. And he took a little bit of a drop on the leaderboard with their score of 24 out of 30. He picked the year of 1999 as his most memorable year working as a janitor at a school. He had a sudden feeling to pursue music and hit the road to L.A. Willie Nelson's song On the Road Again really spoke to Jason during his cross-country trip. So he is performing to that song, The Quick Step Dance. Now let's go ahead and take a look at a clip of the dance. Now, a quick little fun fact is that uh, Jason actually sang the cover, the vocals to his dance, which was like a cute, fun, full circle moment. And you guys just Jason over and over again has been someone that I have had to watch and who has surprised me week after week. He is just someone that continues to improve and his chemistry with Daniela is so good. I think she's a killer choreographer and a great teacher. And that clearly is reflecting on Jason and her past stars that she's been paired with and they ended up getting a score of 27 out of 30 so still matching what the judges were saying they were definitely praising him and uh Derek said his footwork is impressive and his frame has improved so it seems like you know they're taking the advice and using it as constructive criticism which is of course very important in competition shows I'm glad that you clarified that for me because I thought that that was him <laughs> singing the song in the yes. background so that makes so much sense. So thank you. <laughs> I kind of figured. Um, no, I think that, again, super meaningful song, obviously, makes so much sense for him. And I just, ag- I agree with you, honestly. I think Daniela is such a good choreographer. She is so yes. talented. And honestly, like, even the judges mentioned, like, that was kind of a pretty intricate dance. Like, I'm really glad that she was able to pose a challenge to Jason because it's already enough of a challenge to have somebody learn this style of dance that really doesn't have much of a dance background, much less to be able to like offer a challenge of harder choreography in the little amount of time that they have in order to be able to accomplish everything. So I think it's really great. I think they did a really great job. I love the costumes. I love the bus that came out of nowhere. And just (laughs) I I thought that was so cute. I love the props and everything that they do on the show. I think it's super fun. It really makes the dance, but very, very great job. And I feel like Jason is the epitome of like the person who didn't know he could do it, didn't think he could do it. And he's like not the underdog, but he's got quite a tail. I mean, like he is really versatile. Like there's not been a dance that I've seen Jason do to where I'm like, oh, I I don't know about that. Or, oh, I don't know if he should ever do that again. Like, I think he's very talented and like he should consider implementing somehow some more dance into his career because he's a talented musician but he's also a very talented dancer and it's just fun to watch him he's just a funny guy also I'm from Virginia when he said Farmville Virginia I smacked my couch I was like no (laughs) I knew he was from like Virginia as well so I was just like this is just full circle it was so heartwarming to see him and to watch them every week it is but I love Jason I love Jason Mraz he's great (laughs) <laughs> I love him too. And I hope after this competition, whether he wins or not, we just get more music because I I miss mm-hmm. his voice even listening to the cover. I'm like, oh my God, Jason's voice. It takes you back to the nostalgic days of his hits. So hopefully we can get some music out of this competition as well. And last but certainly not least, we have Ariana Maddox. Now, last week, Ariana got a nine from Derek and her hard work is starting to pay off. And no surprise to us, she chose the year 2023 as her most memorable year. She discusses the scandal of it all 
and how the affair started while she was at her grandma's funeral. And of course, that affair between Raquel and Tom. She even mentioned she was dealing with depression and had trouble eating and sleeping. She danced to the Viennese Waltz this week to the song Happier Than Ever, which seemed to be very fitting, especially at this current place in her life right now. Let's go ahead and take a look at her performance. The first thing I noticed when she came out and that performance started was that beautiful dress she was wearing. It was so elegant, flawless. The hair, the makeup was perfect for a dance like this. And I overall thought she was graceful again with the improvement. That's going to be an ongoing trend. You just see improvements week after week, especially hitting week five. And I think she's doing a great job. Now, in that clip we watched, there was a little bit of a stumble, as you can see. Super minor, but again, also being week five, judges are going to be very critical and meticulous about any wrongdoing, and that can easily be a one point deduction, a two point deduction, etc. So the stars have to really start sharpening it up and try not to make any mistakes because, again, it's winding down. We are going to get over that hump to week six. So it's really important and crucial to start tightening everything up. Carrie Ann says she loved watching Ariana fight. And she knows that women watching this performance will definitely feel that as well. Derek says that she connects to the dance and she feels all the performances. And when Ariana was actually talking to Julianne before she got the scores, she got really emotional when it came to wishing that her grandma was there to experience her time on Dancing with the Stars um, and how it's helped her dream and wish and just power through this hard time in her life. Ariana does get a score of 24 out of 30. And again, it wasn't super high. She got eights all around. It wasn't a nine or 10 worthy. But maybe if it wasn't for that little stumble, she could have hit the nine mark. And you know, the celebs have to just be very careful. They cannot go through any more stumbles any further because they can lose points and that can possibly get them eliminated, which is what we do not want, especially for Ariana, because she has a lot of people rooting for her. I think it deserved nines. I really, really do. I think that there was a lot of power there, which is something to really take note of. Um, obviously, there's a lot of emotion. It means a ton to her. If you look at the dancing element of things, I think that, like I said, she had a lot of power. She had a lot of control, which is really good. That's a big thing that I've seen just across the board. I feel like a lot of people are really working on that, like upper body control. And that's really hard, you know, and 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 I think also the fact that she has this injury that's very much unaddressed. We don't know any details. I don't know, frankly, why she hasn't like straight up said like, oh, I rolled my ankle or whatever happened to it. So something something happened. We know she's received physical therapy. She is back in what appears to be ballroom shoes, which is really good for the past couple of weeks. She bounced between bare feet and then um, it's really cute dazzled sneakers that frankly, I wish she would link in her bio because I want them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think that having an unaddressed injury um, is definitely something to kind of take note of. If I were a judge, maybe I would kind of like keep that in mind. Also, I'm a big firm believer, especially again, we're dealing with people that don't have dance as their, we don't have dance as their main background. You know, she's not on this show because she's a dancer. She's on the show because she's a reality star. So I think even with the judging, I, I'm still trying to learn and trying to get a gauge on like when, when we crack down and when we soften because I feel like sometimes I hear like an eight or a nine and I'm like, oh, I kind of feel like it should have went the other way or the inverse. So for her, I don't know, I felt like a nine. If you're going to stumble, I look at the recovery. That's my biggest thing. How did you, did I know you stumbled? After she, I didn't even notice that she stumbled. I read that she stumbled and then I went and I was like, oh, okay, she did stumble. But if I'm yeah, looking same. that much into it, yeah, then it's like, then, you know, I look at the recovery. If you are standing there, if you're evidently forgetting the dance, you know, that's a very unfortunate situation. But that I feel like is requiring a docking of a point. Not if you stumbled 50% chance that it's potentially due to this injury that she's has to be severe enough to the point that she's getting physical therapy for. Have a little bit of grace. That's all. I love the dress. I thought it was a cute dance. I thought that she did a very great job. Again, I don't think that this girl's going anywhere either. I think that she's doing a very great job. And she's definitely surpassing, I think, a lot of the competition. I definitely think that she's also going to be one of the last ones standing as well. 
And I just, I wish they were nines. I think that she'll get there too. But I, I kind of do disagree with the eights. I feel like 24 was a little too low. I think that she deserved a little bit higher. And I'm wondering where everybody else stands with that too. So let us know in the comments. What do you think, Hippo? What do you think about that? Yeah, you know what? I totally forgot about her foot injury. And they should have mm-hmm. given a little bit of grace. But I think maybe at least one nine would have sufficed. But the fact that she got a yeah. 24 for such high praise, it just, again, it doesn't really match right here. Um, so hopefully her foot gets better but i just don't think they have that leniency to give her that grace unfortunately um so hopefully Mm -hmm. next week she is you know has a little bit more redemption in the score area she's performing the best that she's ever performed so that's fun that's matching up but what isn't are the scores so that's where the issue kind of lies kind of like the previous weeks how the scores weren't really matching so hopefully you know, she does get a nine starting next week because she for sure has a technique down and everything. And we've heard that in the feedback. It's just sometimes the scores don't match a little bit. Now with the good comes the not so good dances, unfortunately. First up, we have Mira. Last week, Carrie Ann said she gave queen energy. They got a score of 21 out of 30. Mira ended up picking 2004 as her memorable year when she had her daughter. Mira says being a mother is a cherished role. Her family is everything. And her daughter actually now dances for a contemporary dance company. Her daughter ended up joining in on the rehearsal, which was a very sweet moment. She danced a contemporary dance to the song Time After Time. She was shortly joined on stage with her daughter. And they kind of gave an ode to Romy and Michelle High School Reunion sporting the pink and blue colors. Let's go ahead and take a look at the dance. Again, a super sweet moment of her sharing the stage with her daughter, a fun full circle moment. Super sweet. Again, the blue and the pink, an ode to the movie that everyone still truly loves and still talks about and references. I I love that she is involving her daughter. I think her daughter's a very great dancer. I think that bringing the daughter in didn't do anybody any favors. I, for half of it, I was wondering who that was and I was trying to figure out what pro was there. <laughs> also, I didn't have my glasses on when I watched, so maybe I should have. But I was trying to figure out who this girl was that just popped out of nowhere. I was like, oh, my gosh, somebody's really ready in the audience. And then I figured out that it was her daughter. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this makes so much sense. But I'll be honest, I didn't know who it was. Um, And then I just think that it took away from the dance. I think that she was on a roll with it. I think that and again, I'm not I'm not coming after the daughter or the relationship that they share. I understand that it's very beautiful. I'm just saying from an audience, from a viewer's perspective, especially like I don't know Mira very well, like as far as I haven't followed her career. I didn't realize that she had a daughter. I didn't realize her until Dancing with the Stars. So it's not like I'm very, I'm not like, oh yeah, that's that's her daughter. You know what I mean? It took me a minute. So I think it was a little bit distracting from my point of view, obviously from the judge's point of view, which is the point of view that matters. You know, I, I they seemed like they really much enjoyed it. And I think that that's great. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I really like Mira. I think that she's a sweetheart. I felt so bad for what ended up happening this evening with her. I felt awful. Um, but I don't know. I just I feel really bad about everything that ended up going down. I think that the dance was very sweet, but I think that there were definitely some things that needed tightened up. I know I think I don't know if she has a brace on her ankle, but I know she's got something up here on her wrist. I mean, I tip my hat to her for being able to make it this far in this competition. She's beautiful and she's a beautiful dancer. So yeah, what do you think about everything? I know you love the ode too, which I love that as well. I think that that's really great. Yeah, I really liked the ode and I noticed it while I was watching. I was like, oh wait, yeah, the pink and the blue. That's so cute. Mm -hmm. Um, I got to say, as far as the dance itself, it wasn't amazing, but it was, you know, still good for her to be there week five. Obviously, it wasn't worth a nine or a ten. But Derek did give her the first eight that they've ever received. So, you know, there is slow but steady progression and improvement. Um, And she was telling Julianne that it was a dream come true to share the stage with her daughter. And they got a total of 22 out of 30. Again, Derek was the one that gave that eight. Um, Not surprising that she was towards the bottom because, I mean, the competition already is peaking week five. 
And she's kind of, you know, falling short a little bit as far as her progression throughout this competition compared to the others. Uh, it, it was it was difficult. And, you know, we do learn her fate later on in the show, which we'll we'll touch on. Um, but I think there was someone else that was more deserving to go home, which we'll also get to. Um, I thought she had still more time to warm up a little bit and get in the groove. I wanted to give her a little bit more of a chance. Um, but unfortunately, it was cut a little bit short. Um, but at least, you know, she did get to share that sweet moment with her daughter, especially because they have that close bond. So that was cute to see. And a, I would say a good way to go out to have her daughter by her side and to share that moment with her, um, even though, unfortunately, she is not going to be here next week, which, again, we will discuss. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and talk about the next dance that unfortunately is under our worst dance category. And that is of Allison Hannigan. Now, last week, Allison got a score 18 out of 30, and she's trying to improve every week, but it doesn't come natural. She chose her memorable year, 2003, which is when she married her husband. They met working, and she said they had an instant connection. Allison danced to the Viennese Waltz to the song Perfect by Ed Sheeran. Let's go ahead and look at a clip. I mean, she looks beautiful in her green dress, and I loved how they used the prop of a yellow umbrella and the confetti lightly falling on the dance floor during their dance. Her husband was so sweet, he cheered her on in the audience. And as far as the dance, I thought it was sweet to the point and a huge improvement compared to last week. I think this was her best dance for sure. And um, Bruno also agreed and says she was more elegant and fluid. And Carrie Ann said that criticism is out of love and everyone loves her because she works so hard. And I completely agree with that. It seems like she def doesn't take that criticism to heart and doesn't take it personally. She implements it into her dance and into her rehearsals. So that was great to see. And she ended up getting a score of 21 out of 30 and said she feels great and jokingly says she can go gamble. I think Allison is shocked that Allison is in Dancing with the Stars week five. I love her so much. I think she's so cute. You made a really great point, which I want to agree with. I think she is, she seems so soft. Like she looks like the type of person, if you looked at her and said, no, don't touch that, she'd just break down and cry. But she's not, she's tough. Like that girl can take criticism and she can apply it very well. Again, I love to watch those who are making progress and improving. Uh, from an audience standpoint, I don't, I'm not looking for everybody to be perfect. What fun is that? You know, then I just watch all of the opening numbers of solely the pros who have trained since pretty much the minute that they were born and know absolutely nothing else other than professional dance. So I think that she is making a lot of improvements. I think that she looked very elegant overall in this particular waltz and I don't know. I, I'm really curious to see how far this girl can go. I'm always rooting for her and I'm always hoping and praying that she is happy and comfortable and ready to go. And I mean, I know one week she was even sick and she still managed to be there. Like Allison's a fighter and I love it. And I love that she's paying respect to her husband like that. You know, I think especially just like as in Hollywood and just as a celebrity, we need to see more healthy relationships. Thank you for showing us what love looks like. And what caring for your spouse looks like in a healthy marriage and a healthy relationship. You know, I love to see stuff like that. So I think she did a great job. And I'm, I'm really, really hoping that we get to continue to watch her continue to progress for quite some time. But she's so cute. And I'm just proud of her even for making it this far. I agree. I think she's kind of like that ray of sunshine. Just that smile that you want to keep around. A fan favorite, I believe. And I predicted that she would be a fan favorite. And she definitely seems like it. Especially, I think, on top of being a fan favorite, she is improving, which, again, is also very important. We don't want her just to be around for giggles. We do want to see her perform and her improve and hopefully get 9 or 10 sometime soon. But it was very sweet to see her dedicate that performance to her husband and how just gushy they get around each other. I mean, he brought her flowers and it was just a really sweet moment. So I hope, you know, she does continue to make it farther into the competition, especially now that this uh, performance we're kind of seeing her being taken seriously and not as like the fun goofy joke you know because she does kind of seem like the class mm -hmm. clown she's very goofy and very sweet but now we took her serious and see oh whoa she actually has potential so you know improve more and more so that's going to be really fun to see in the upcoming weeks 
And lastly, we have Harry Jowsey, who is unfortunately part of our worst performances for this week of Dancing with the Stars. Uh, he chose his memorable year as 2020 when he was on Too Hot to Handle and was put immediately on the map everywhere. He says the hardest thing was people telling his mom and friends to die due to his fame. They chat with his best friend who had Harry's back during the dark times. He performed a contemporary dance to the song Gotta Keep Your Head Up, which seems to be very fitting, especially with everything that he has gone through. Let's take a look at the clip. All right, Hannah, I'll let you go first on this one. When I used to do dance, I wish that that was the guy that lifted me. I was with a guy <laughs> that was shorter than me. I, and he dropped me, Hibba. I, 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 I like Harry. I just, <laughs> if it were a lifting contest, he'd win. I don't yeah. know what to do about this one. It aggravates me because I mm. really think they're first of all they need to date after the show if they don't they're doing everybody a disservice she's 18 leave it alone it's fine they're cute it's fine but <laughs> they're really cute I think that they're adorable do that but I don't know like it's very hard imagine I, I I've read a lot of things where people are like Riley you're using him to basically just like stand there and you're dancing it's like also I have to play devil's advocate and look from Riley's standpoint if I were Riley, and that's what I was given to have choreography for every week, and I'm not insulting Harry at all. Gorgeous man, he can model for his entire life. He could probably just continue doing Netflix reality shows and be fine. Like, he, he's Harry, you know? But if I were given that to have to choreograph every week, that's so complicated. He can't do much. He doesn't have hip mobility. He is six foot five. He is solid. He is just not built to dance, and that's okay. You know, but I wish that we could continue to see the progress. And I think that probably Riley is struggling with that as well at this point with choreographing and trying to get him situated. And I'm sure she's at a loss. All she knows is how to just make him hoist her up in the air and make them both look good. You know, she, it's almost like they're hiding behind the fact that Riley can do choreography and he can't. And so I think that at this point, you know, I want to see him continue to improve. I feel like last week was really good for them. I thought that that was a step in the right direction. Um, I think that this week was definitely a step backwards. But uh, do I want to see them go home? No, I will be honest. I get excited when they come on my screen. But at the same time, when you zoom out and put bias aside and look at it as a competition and who deserves to be there, who is actually progressing, mm -hmm. it's not Harry right now. It's just not. And it, and now is when you see how much of a popularity contest it is. And then unfortunately, I think that Mira ending up getting eliminated, I think that that's where the popularity contest kind of comes into play. You know, when you have Harry still staying and Mira can move and Harry can't, but who's more popular on social media? Who's more popular? You know, I'm kind of thinking like that. I don't want to think like that, but I am thinking like that because that's the brutal truth of it all, unfortunately. You know, I'd be okay seeing Harry go home. I just wanted <laughs> Mira to stay. Again, his performance has gotten less stiff, but he just still stomps in his movements and is still <laughs> stiff. And I think, yeah, Riley is just trying to choreograph to do these lifts and maybe distract a little bit and fill up the time while they're on the dance floor during this dance. But you can't keep doing that. And Mm -hmm. I, I think she, they can't keep getting away with that because it's just going to get old and repetitive and it's going to have to stick to the dancing itself because um, Carrie Ann even said that uh, Harry tends to close up and go back into his shell when Riley isn't around him while dancing. When Harry kind of has a solo moment on the dance floor and the dance routine, he just freezes and becomes more stiff. And that can't happen, especially at week five and the other competitors are way ahead of him as far as their skill level and how much they've proven in the trajectory of all their performances and it also boils down to how many times can fans save him because there is a point where the judges scores take a higher percentage of saving him and for example maybe he next week is in the bottom three with Mauricio well Mauricio maybe has more of a bigger fan base so then Harry would get sent home so it's kind of like a numbers game and it really depends how often these fans pull up for him and if they pull up for him versus what the judges score him overall. 
Because the fans, you know, can't always save him every time or every week. So I think he just really needs to improve on his technique. And I don't know if it's going to happen in a week, two weeks, if he even makes it that far. But I mean, enough is enough with the stiffness. Come on. Like, it's the same critique he's been getting over and over again. He's great with the lifts. Yes. But he needs to work more on his rhythm, his musicality, which is what Derek and Carrie Ann said. And uh, he ended up scoring 18 out of 30. And I'm not surprised at that. He got sixes all around. Um, and he just needs to do something more to get into the sevens or the eights, if that. So I think he has a lot of work to do still. A lot of work to do. And it, yeah, and I think as far as the progress goes, and this is a little harsh, maybe, but it's the truth. <laughs> he's made the least amount of progress, I feel like, out of anybody in the competition, oh, yes. even those who are sent home so far. Because like you said, he is getting the same critique over and over again. And again, this is not a jab at Jowsey. But at the end of the day, you have to also, it, it's a competition. And it's really not fair when you have somebody who deserves to continue to be going and to be on. But maybe popularity is the reason why. Yeah, they're not there anymore. You know, sometimes like I like the idea of the fans. I do. But I think that the judges, I don't I don't know. I don't know how you fix it. Because I was going to say, like, in a way, maybe you take out the fan aspect and then you have the judges do it. But then everybody's going to come back and say that it's biased. And I'm sure that it is to a certain degree. Yeah. But then if you flip it, there's really no good way, no easy way of doing it. It's definitely, definitely challenging. But yeah, I'm hoping next week he comes out and just starts shaking it because he's got to. And if he doesn't, I mean, he's going to, they're going to go. Uh, I'm really amazed that they've been there this long. Um, and yeah, again, I, I think Mira did not deserve to go home tonight. I really don't. And I don't think that, uh, I think, I think Harry was probably, he, I thought that he was going home. I was prepping myself yeah. when we, they were down to the final three. I was like, oh, it's going to be Harry. And then when I heard Mira, I was like, what? You know, I was like, no, that doesn't make any sense to me. So maybe the fans did save him tonight. I don't know. Right. I don't know and if they identify publicly a fan save. I don't think they do. So maybe that is what happened. Right. I definitely thought Mira should have been safe. But unfortunately, she had to go home. Um, and now, of mm -hmm. course, time for the eliminations. The top scores were Charity and Sochi. And Harry was at the bottom, which should have been more fitting for him to be the one to go home. But it wasn't. Uh, the bottom three contestants consisted of Harry, Mira and Allison. And of course, to our surprise, Mira and Gleb were sent home. Mira said it's been an incredible dream come true, and she is grateful for the experience. I was very surprised at this. I thought, again, it was going to be Harry, because to me, it seems like he has the least amount of improvement, just like we had stated. And Hannah, I'm sure you agree. I don't know what else to really say. Time is honestly ticking. And I feel like if he doesn't improve, it's just going to get old, and he's just going to be a waste of a spot that keeps getting saved and other more deserving people that deserve to stay are just going to be sent home like Mira. So I hope this trend doesn't continue um, because he really needs to earn his spot and he hasn't so far. And again, the fans are just saving him at this moment. I don't think that's fair, but you know what? It's not up to me. Um, but that, that was my reaction. Did you have any other final thoughts, Hannah? I think that obviously I'm enjoying everything overall. I think that, Harry is on borrowed time, especially if something doesn't improve. Um, but yeah, I, I think that everybody else that is in the competition is doing a very great job. I'm really happy overall with like everybody's improvement overall from like a zoomed out type of aspect. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know. Also, I have to say, I love Mauricio. I vote for Mauricio <laughs> every week 10 times. To win five, I was two, waiting three. for his shout out. <laughs> I was waiting love you, for Mauricio. it. Love you, Mauricio. You really, you went on a date with Emma. Oh my goodness. Um, and now there's a lot of drama. But I think Mauricio's made a lot of um <laughs> I think he's made a lot of headway and I'm really glad to have seen how much yes. he's progressed. He's another good example of somebody. He pulled a Harry one week. I felt like he kind of stood there a little bit more then and then quickly got out of that, you know? Now Harry needs to yes. take a note out of Mauricio's book and kind of shift gears. But I felt and I felt like Mauricio's Dance tonight was his best one too. So, um, yeah, yes, everybody's improving. Sure. I'm loving Dancing with the Stars season 32. I am. This is my Super Bowl, over and over and over. This is my. <laughs> this is my preseason. <laughs> you know, I like it. It's yeah, fun. the preseason. There you go. <laughs> exactly. Now let's talk about next week for uh, Dancing with the Stars. Next week's theme is going to be Monster Night, which will be on Halloween because, of course, Halloween will be on a Tuesday. 
my prediction is I'm expecting to see maybe some gory, bloody costumes, maybe a lot of Pasa Doble dances, since that is a little bit more on the darker, intense side. Total guess. I know some celebrities already did the Pasa Doble, but maybe more will do it for next week. I can't really think of any other scary dances they might do. Tango. I don't even know if they're... Maybe a tango. Oh, that's true. Maybe the tango. I don't know about freestyle. Maybe they could do something creepy with that. Um, Mm -hmm. So lots of options for different types of dances. Um, Do you have any predictions, Hannah, for next week? What that could possibly entail? I'm sure somebody's going to dance to the Monster Mash. Um, That's like... (laughs) I I, I was more like thinking in terms of like playlists and like songs or maybe even if somebody's going to dance. Or Thriller, one of those. Um, Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, how many Halloween songs do we really have to pick from though? You know, you got like 24 maybe yeah. on Spotify, you know, <laughs> we don't have much. It's not like Christmas. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm hoping that we see some like fun costumes or something like that. Also, just a side note, I think that Alfonso and Julianne are very entertaining as the hosts. They keep me, especially yeah. Alfonso last week was cracking me up. Um, this week he's, he's funny, funny yeah. too, but he's last funny week he was yeah, during the Toy Story dance, he was on a rocking horse. I don't know if you saw that. And he's just like <laughs> rocking back and forth. And I was like, what are you doing? You know that the producers are like, let's stick him on a horse. And he's like, okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think next week is going to be really fun. I'm very excited. And I completely forgot that Halloween is next Tuesday. Thank you for the reminder. Oh my goodness. And you know, I feel like another thing they should watch out for is, you know, Dancing with the Stars is notoriously known for having elaborate, big costumes. So I think what the celebrities might have to watch out for is dancing in those costumes because that can also bring up another challenge. Not only do you need to have the technique down to remember your steps, but now you have to wear this maybe heavy or long dress type of costume and not slip or stumble. So that is also going to add on to the challenge of them not stumbling because like we mentioned, it's down to the wire. We're hitting week six. You got to have those steps sharpened down. So hopefully no costume you know, throws them out of whack and challenges them in any way. So that's something that we can also keep in mind and keep our eyes peeled out for. But those are all the Dancing with the Stars highlights that we have for you guys today. Let us know where you guys' reactions are to the episode below. Who were your standouts? Who were your favorite moments? But before you go, please like this video, subscribe, and turn on those notifications to our channel so you never miss out on any news updates. I'm your host, Hibba Berry, joined today by Hannah Fletcher. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next.